right, very good. Welcome. Thank you for joining me today. We are going to have a conversation today about semantics and data roles and metadata inheritance. And if that's what you came to see, then you're in the right place. If that's not what you came to see, then I suggest you stay anyway, because this is going to be a really cool talk. So I uh, hope you're all enjoying the conference so far. Uh, before we kick things off, I want to ask you all a question. Can you think of a time when you have been looking at a data source, or you've been looking at a workbook, and you see some data in it, but you don't know what that data means? The data has a label on it. You're looking at that label, but you do not know what that label actually represents in the real world. How many of you have had an experience like this? All right, that's pretty much everybody in the room. Um, this is a really common problem. Uh, and as you can imagine, uh, your data is only as useful as people understand it. If you spend a lot of time assembling the perfect data source, and you put a lot of effort and a lot of energy in building the perfect viz, and people look at that viz, but they can't understand what it means in the real world, it's not useful. So it's really important that we spend time thinking about, well, how can we make sure that people understand what this data means? And that is what semantics is all about. So in this conversation, in this talk, we're going to do a few things. We're going to talk about what semantics are and about how uh, we can define them and how, about we, how we can communicate them uh, to users who are consuming our data sources or consuming our visualizations. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the tools that Tableau provides today to help you refine and leverage some of those semantics, as well as a sneak preview into new functionality that we're building here at Tableau uh, to make it easier to ensure that those semantics are consistent across all your data sources in Tableau. And that's where the metadata inheritance comes in. So um, with that in mind, um, let's go ahead and jump right in. So my name is Ryan Natala. Uh, I am a development manager here at Tableau, and I manage the semantics team. Uh, before working here at Tableau, I was the CTO and co-founder of a startup called ClearGraph. And uh, it, some of you may know that ClearGraph was the company that Tableau acquired back in 2017 that built some of the foundational technology behind Ask Data. And uh, while we were working on ClearGraph, one of the things that we spent a lot of time thinking about was how do we define semantics and how do we build a semantic layer uh, that is uh, going to support a natural language querying experience. And as you can probably imagine, uh, it's very important to understand what your data means if we're going to understand natural language about that data. Uh, so uh, in this conversation, we're going to talk about some of the lessons that we learned uh, at ClearGraph and in building ASK data and about how they apply to semantics in general uh, at Tableau. So uh, a quick agenda. First, we're going to provide uh, some introduction about what semantics are. And then we're going to discuss uh, a tool that we are building at Tableau called Data Roles, and three use cases that Data Roles have in your organization. Using Data Roles to centralize definitions of data, using Data Roles to validate and clean up data, and lastly, using Data Roles to inherit metadata across your data sources to ensure that that metadata is consistent. So let's jump right into what data model semantics actually are, so that we all know we're talking about the same thing. When you give a data set to a computer, this is what it sees. If I gave this to you, you probably wouldn't be able to make much sense of it. Now, we can take this and transform it into a different representation that has a little bit more meaning. It makes a little bit more sense. You start to read some of these words, and you can start to realize that this is saying something about the weather. There's some information about temperature and, and wind in here, um, but you'd have to read the whole thing to really understand what it means, and, and a computer is definitely not going to get it in this form. You could add a little bit more structure, and now we have a much better understanding about what this data is trying to tell us. Because we have our rows and we have our columns, we understand the relationships between the different pieces of information. This is starting to add layers of semantic representation to our data. And in Tableau, this, this is how our data is structured. It, it looks like a table. And if we break down the parts of this table, Tableau already has a lot of understanding of the semantics of, of this data set. Let's isolate just one of these columns, and let's go a little bit farther, and let's isolate just one of the cells. And 
if you give a data source like this to Tableau, Tableau knows a bit about it. It knows that Massachusetts is a state and that it belongs to the United States and it has a few different synonyms for how users might ask questions about uh, that data or how it might manifest in different data sources, where it is on the map and what it looks like when it's visualized. These are just a few different examples of what we call value level semantics that Tableau has built in today. But it's not just value level semantics. We can pull back out to our table and look at the column headers which represent our fields of the data source. And we can look at one of those fields and see that we have information about uh, what the field's name is, uh, what type of data can be expected to be in that field, more synonyms. Uh, we have information about how those values should be formatted uh, and whether or not it supports certain types of computations when it's used in a time series. Uh, lots of metadata that Tableau has at the field level. And so what, is this, what does this information do for us? In one sentence, semantics is metadata which helps us understand the mapping between your data and the real world. How does your data reflect something that's in the real world that we care about that we want to understand better? And that's what semantics are all about. So Tableau uses this information in a bunch of ways. When you're writing a calculation in Tableau, you can compute the average of a numerical field, but you cannot compute the average of a string field. You know, pretty obvious. Uh, if you have a few different fields selected in Tableau, show me will automatically suggest the right visualization type because it knows that two measures in a dimension should produce a scatter plot. And that helps you out because now you don't have to go through the work of explicitly choosing a visualization type because Tableau knows what tends to make sense with different types of data. So having you know, the right classification of dimension and measure is really useful for getting that right vis type. Postal code is a really good example of semantics because while it's a number, it's a discrete field. It never makes sense to take the average of a postal code, right? Uh, so instead, you probably want to use it as a dimension. Formatting helps make information easier to digest and understand. When you're visualizing the scatter plot here, you can see that we've got percentage information for our profit ratio or dollar information for our sales and our profit. If we didn't have these pieces of formatting, this visualization would be harder to understand. People would have to do more work in order to get meaning out of this information. But with that formatting, I can take one glimpse at it and instantly I can understand how it maps to the real world. Speaking of the real world, we have metadata about our data sources that help, it, help us map it uh, so that we know geographically where our data represents, in this case, uh, uh, sales information in different parts of the country or different parts of the world. So these are just a few examples of how Tableau uses value level and field level semantics to improve analytical experiences right now. So there are a few patterns that you might see with this. And in general, the role that these semantics have is kind of like street signs. It tells us, hey, you are not allowed to go down this path. It's a bad idea, don't do it. Or, you know, you, you will have a better experience if you go down this road. So definitely try this out. And those street signs, are really useful. I mean, imagine living in a world where you didn't have street signs and it was really unclear which direction you should be driving your car or where you should be riding your bicycle. Uh, these street signs help us move quickly from, from where we want to go or from where we are to where we want to go. But a lot of times your data sources don't look like this. A lot of times your data sources in your workbooks look a little bit more like this. You know, maybe, 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 you've, maybe you've got some indication of what your data means, uh, but uh, maybe it's a little bit lacking. Maybe there are a few places where it's very unclear how users should be mapping your data to the real world. So let's talk about, now that we have a little bit of a foundation of what, what semantics are and about how we use them in Tableau today, let's talk a little bit about uh, a tool that we've built here at Tableau uh, to enrich semantics and apply them in more effective ways, and that's called data roles. 
Uh, so uh, data roles are a brand new feature that we've released at Tableau uh, starting in 2019.3. Uh, uh, and so many of you probably haven't heard of them. Uh, and data roles are a generalization of the geographic role that you probably are familiar with. So when you go and you build a data source and you're classifying your fields, one of the things that you might do is tell Tableau that this field is a country, or it's a city, or it's a state. Well, data roles are a way to do that same thing, but not just for geography. Uh, you can use data roles to tell Tableau that a field actually is a social security number, or an email address or um, a department in your organization, and then use that semantic classification to validate your data, understand more deeply what that data actually means, uh, or inherit some metadata. So now let's talk about some of those use cases and how they actually work. So starting with centralized data definitions. Uh, some of you may be familiar with uh, data dictionaries, or business glossaries, one of the functions that data roles has is uh, providing a single place where you can define what some of your key business terms are and what they mean. So that different people in your organization in different places can all look at the same piece of information and understand this is what the definition of performance rating is. So that you don't have 25 different visualizations or 25 different data sources that all have different definitions of that same thing. And the, average, the average human has about a, a vocabulary of about 40 to 50,000 words, uh, and, and figuring out what each of those different words means and, and all of the different possible interpretations uh, is a little bit tricky. Uh, and so it helps to have a glossary or a single place where you can store some of that information. So, the centralized data definitions help you define what data means. It helps you search and explore those key business concepts so you can discover you know, you know, what they mean when, when, you dis when you encounter them as part of your, your, your data exploration and analysis, as well as govern uh, who can view them. Uh, because just like any other piece of content that you have at Tableau, uh, data security and accessibility is an important consideration. And you don't want uh, just anybody having access uh, to understand your every single component of your data dictionary. You want to be able to control uh, who has access to that. So uh, I'm going to uh, show you a quick demonstration of what they actually look like and what it actually entails uh, to create uh, a data role. So uh, let's pop into Tableau Server. So this is a, 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 a Tableau Server deployment. And if you go into the Explore tab, you can see that you've got your top-level projects. And if you click on Projects, uh, one of the options that you can select is All Data Roles, uh, which is a new option that recently was added. And if you click on that, then you can see that in this particular site, I've already started to add a couple data roles. And this is just a few. Uh, you might have a lot more. And these data roles describe key business concepts or, or key terms uh, that are going to be important as part of the analytics process. And if I click on one of these data roles, there's a few pieces of information here that might be useful. Uh, I've got uh, what data type that data role might apply to, as well as synonyms uh, that might be used to refer to that data role instead of the primary name, and a description, a definition of what that information means uh, in the real world. Uh, in this case, that is helpful because somebody who's looking at this data role may not realize what eligible non-citizen means. You know, that's kind of an unintuitive value. Uh, and it turns out that it means somebody who qualifies for federal student aid but is not a citizen of the United States. All right, so that's a, a way that you can start to encode some information in these data roles uh, and then uh, have a, a reference that people can use to, uh, to access them in the future. Uh, and you know, I've got a few of these different things. You'll notice that each one has a list of values uh, that are valid values for that data role, which helps you uh, contextualize where this might actually show up in your, in your data source. So how do you actually go about creating one of these things? Well, uh, in 2019.3, the first entry point that we created for adding data roles uh, comes from Prep Builder. Uh, 
And so if you're in prep and you're working with uh, a, uh, a particular data source, and while you're cleaning up, you notice, uh, for example, that uh, this is a data source that I have uh, for, uh, it's an, uh, for an HR data set that describes all of the employees who work at my company and uh, their, their roles, what department they work in, and uh, if they have been recently let go, what was their reason for termination? And so I might want to start to standardize reason for termination because you know, maybe I'm noticing that uh, there are inconsistent representations of reason for termination across my company and I wanna be able to do analytics on, on those discrete uh, values uh, for termination uh, so that I can understand, well, you know, why are we letting people go and how can we increase retention uh, for our employees? So to do that in Prep Builder, all you have to do is find the field, click on these uh, three little dots here, and then select Publish uh, as a Data Role. And then when you do that, you'll notice that uh, it has uh, selected each of the different values that are in that data role. And you select a project that you want to publish it to, and you can give a definition. Uh, reason for terminating an employee. And then when you run that flow, it will generate the data role and it will publish it to your Tableau server uh, where you can see it and everybody else in your organization who has access uh, to that project uh, can see it as well. And then just like any other uh, piece of content that you have in Tableau, uh, you can uh, move it around to different projects, you can change its owner so you can govern who is responsible for owning and defining uh, what that piece of information is, uh, or you can govern the permissions. And the permissions let you can control um, who can view that data role, uh, who can override it or modify it, um, uh, and who can delete it, among other things. So that's just a quick glimpse into what it looks like for using uh, Tableau's data roles as a data dictionary to start to define a central repository of definitions uh, and their values. But some of you may be thinking, okay, well, Ryan, that's, that's great. Um, you know, now I have a, a place where I can define a bunch of definitions, but you know, why should I do that in Tableau? How do I actually use this information? Uh, so let's talk about the first use case where you can actually use some of this information. Uh, and that's data validation and cleanup. So uh, <clears throat> let me talk about what that means and how that works. Let's say, for example, that uh, you have uh, a data role, and that data role defines a list of valid values uh, for, uh, say, um, uh, in this case, where you're, re you're recruiting your employees from. Uh, in, the, in the context of my HR example. And uh, you notice that there's some inconsistency between your data sources. Sometimes they use different terminology to refer to the same lead source for recruiting. Uh, sometimes you have a data source that has junk data in it uh, for invalid uh, or uh, uh, non-standard lead sources for recruiting. And you wanna be able to standardize all of these different data sources to all refer to the same information. Well, in prep, you can set the data role on a field. And that's where you can actually link your data role with the data that you actually have in your organization. And once you set that information, uh, you can clean up your data or detect which of the values that you have in your data source are invalid. So let's see what that actually looks like. So I'm going to jump into um, uh, Prep Builder again. And if you remember from my list of data roles here on Tableau Server, one of my data roles is recruitment source. And this is the channel through which we first make contact with a candidate for a new hire. And here I've got a list of 22 valid recruitment sources uh, that we use as a business, and we have lots of different data sources that might pertain to that information. So in Prep Builder, I have a data source here called recruiting costs. And this data source is a data source that I'm working with right now, which helps me understand how expensive it is uh, to find a new candidate for hiring an employee uh, through each of these different recruitment sources. Because I want to understand the relationship between our expenditures in recruiting uh, and the, the employees that we're actually hiring. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is add a step. And then once I'm here, I see that I have one of these columns, which is employment source. And 
Right off the bat, I'm noticing that there is at least one value here that definitely is not uh, a valid recruitment source. Uh, and I want to see you know, how many other values might be garbage in here as well. So I'm going to click on this uh, uh, data type indicator here inside the column in prep. And I'm going to assign a data role to the field. So I'm going to select recruitment source as the data role that I want to apply to this field. And right off the bat, you can see that there are a few values that have been flagged as non-valid or non-matching values uh, to, my, to my data role. So I got to clean that up. So if I click on this little uh, light bulb icon here that says recommendations, it gives me some suggestions on ways that I can clean up some of this information. Uh, so for example, uh, if I do a group and replace using Prep Builder's smart replacement, Right there, you can see that it detected that uh, I had misspelled online web application in this data source, and it fixed it for me right off the bat. I didn't actually have to do anything, but it knows that because it's a small typo, I should just change that, and it corrected it to the, to the right uh, recruitment source value. So that's super useful. Um, and the way that Tableau is doing that under the hood is that we use the same exact algorithm that we use for geocoding your data which is how we figure out how to map the cities and the states and the countries in your data source to latitude and longitude values. And the nice uh, visuals that we show up in a map, uh, we use the same algorithm to do that geocoding as we do to validate your data here uh, and automatically correct it to the appropriate, uh, to the appropriate value. Uh, info session, I recognize as being the wrong uh, recruitment source. I actually want this to be information session. Uh, and if I do that, then you can see that the little exclamation point goes away. Um, and then source is just wrong. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I, I exclude um, the, the, uh, the invalid value, because I don't want that in my data source anymore. And now, when I look at uh, my employment source, all of the values are valid. Uh, and I have a clean data source that is consistent with my data role, and the data role has been applied. So other users who go and look at this data source will be able to see um, that not only is this you know, employment source uh, a field, but it also is uh, a recruitment source consistent with our business standard of data for uh, what a recruitment source is. So uh, that's a quick glimpse into what it looks like to actually use um, data roles to clean up and validate data in my data source. So that's just the first use case of how we can actually leverage semantics and data roles uh, to drive more consistency. Uh, but you might be wondering, okay, well, what's What's the benefit of doing this? Why, why should I care? Maybe you've, you work in an organization where you have lots of engineers who are you know, building all these tables that have all this data, and, and sometimes the data is inconsistent, but it, it works for them. And I, I think that here it might make sense to take a page out of, out of the, the marketing and brand definition books. Uh, and, because there's a lot of research that's been done on consistency in the context of human psychology and about how we relate to information when we see it. Uh, and if, for example, every time you went to Starbucks, Starbucks had a different logo, uh, you probably would, one, not really trust where that coffee's coming from. Um, and then two, you probably wouldn't remember the brand. You probably wouldn't realize, hey, the next time you need coffee, you should go back to this one establishment that has that brand that you recognize uh, and it means something to you. We should think about data in the same way. We should have consistency in the information that we uh, put out to our teams and to the rest of the world so that they can trust that information and that they can recognize it. Studies that have been done have found that brands that are represented consistently are three to four times more likely to be remembered and recognized than brands that are not. And I argue that the same is true with our data. So if we can put effort into defining the standard definitions of what our data means, and then actually enforcing those standards by cleaning up our data and aligning on the same representations, then our data is going to be more trustworthy and it's going to be more useful in our organizations. Let's talk about a third use case for data roles, and that is metadata inheritance. And so here I'm giving you all a glimpse into a new capability that Tableau is working on now uh, that we intend to release in an upcoming release of Tableau Server that allows you to actually reuse some of the metadata that's in your data roles 
across multiple data sources. So let's talk about how that works. In Tableau today, uh, there are a bunch of different pieces of metadata that exist on your field. We talked about this at the beginning of the talk. And one of those pieces of metadata is synonyms. So in Ask Data, for example, you can define a bunch of synonyms that might be useful for, uh, for asking natural language questions. In this case, I have a field called quantity, and I might want to be able to ask questions about order size. And if I add order size as a synonym to my field, I can do that in Ask Data. I can ask furniture, average, order size, and I'll get back the right piece of information. But it takes a decent amount of time and effort to go through and add synonyms to every single field. And also, if I have many data sources that have quantity in them, adding those same synonyms to every single data source that has quantity in it. That's a lot of fields, that's a lot of synonyms. So, uh, we are adding that same exact data roles selector that we just saw in Prep Builder uh, to Tableau Server. So that when you go into Tableau Server and you look at the list of fields that you have in your published data source, you can see the metadata that exists on those fields and you can attach a data role to that field. And then once you attach a data role to that field, Tableau will inherit the description or any synonyms that have been defined on that data role in the field that you're working on. That way you only have to define your metadata once. So how does that work? Well, uh, today there already exists a metadata inheritance hierarchy that exists in Tableau. And the way it works is at the very bottom layer, you've got your database. You've got your database table um, or you've got your CSV file and that has a bunch of information in it. And Tableau consumes that information and then on top of it, it has a data source. And in that data source, you can override the different pieces of metadata that exist at that underlying data layer. Uh, and then when you use that data source in a workbook, uh, you get all of that metadata that's in that data source for free. But if you want, you can go and add some new metadata or you can overwrite some of that metadata in the workbook. And then the same thing happens when you start using some of that information at the sheet level. And data roles get slotted right into the middle of that stack of metadata inheritance. So now you can define metadata about field names or descriptions or synonyms. And you can define all of that inside of a data role and then attach that data role to fields in multiple data sources. And out of the box, they'll inherit that metadata so that you don't have to define it in multiple places. But of course, if you want, you can always override it at the higher levels of the stack. And that's the philosophy that Tableau has about metadata inheritance. We want to enable reuse and replication, but we don't want to force you to necessarily adhere to a definition that maybe isn't the best one for your use case in your data source. So let me show you an example of how this works. Let's say that I have three different data sources that all have information about Tableau products. One maybe has information about downloads. Maybe another one has information about product feedback. And each one has a field called product name or source product or something along those lines. And those, those fields have values in them with synonyms. So in this case, I have a value called prep. And sometimes it has a synonym called Tableau prep, sometimes prep builder. Uh, but I want all of these representations of Tableau prep to have consistent representations so that when I'm in Ask Data and I'm asking questions about these data sources, I can use the same language and I'll get the same results back. So I create a data role called Tableau product name and in that I have a value called prep and it has uh, a synonym for a Tableau prep. And when I link each of these data sources with that data role, they will inherit any missing metadata that is present on that data role. And notice that it didn't override the synonyms that were already there. It's just adding the synonyms from the data role. And then if I want, I can go in and add a new synonym to the data role. So here I added Maestro, which was one of the early code names for the, the Tableau Prep Builder product. And when I add that, Maestro automatically pops up in each of the different data sources that are linked to that data role. Or if I want, I can go into one of my data sources and I can override 
uh, one of those values uh, by getting rid of it or adding my own custom metadata uh, to, to the data source. So that's a feature that's coming soon in Tableau Server. It's something that we're working on and hoping to release later in 2020. So how do you actually go about integrating this with your workflows in your businesses. So the, the, the process that we've seen that works best is that you start with the data. Instead of uh, starting with uh, uh, imagining what sorts of, of key business terms might make the most sense in your organization, going and looking at your data sources and then figuring out where you have critical or useful information uh, that's uh, that's presented in multiple places, uh, especially if it's presented inconsistently in multiple places. So you start with the data and understand how it's being used. Then define those key business terms. Understand what their definitions are. And sometimes it's not clear. Sometimes you need to go and you need to talk to people and you need to uh, uh, get different opinions about what that information should be represented as in your organization. But uh, that business term needs an owner and it needs a standard definition of how it should be used. And you might ask me, well, what happens when I have two different uh, teams of people or two different organizations that have the same term, uh, but they, they have a different meaning? So for example, uh, you might look at uh, uh, two different businesses, uh, uh, say uh, a company that sells uh, beverages to consumers and a company that builds airplane engines uh, and they both might have a definition of customer. But in one case, that customer is a person, and in another case, that customer is an enterprise. They're using the same term, uh, but in both cases, they mean something very, very different. Well, Tableau supports this with data roles as well, because just like any other piece of content that exists in Tableau, data roles exist within a project and their accessibility is defined by the permissions of the data role and the permissions of the project. So if you wanna have one definition of customer that exists for the marketing organization, and you wanna have another definition of customer that exists for the finance organization, that's fine. You can create different projects and you can put all the content that has consistent definitions uh, within those different zones of content within your Tableau server deployment. But if you want everybody to have the same definition, then you give everybody in the organization access to the same data role so that when they're going and assigning a data role to a field, uh, they all see, oh, this is the unified centralized definition of how we define what a customer is or how we define uh, what the, the, the performance score is of, of customer feedback and, and things of that nature. So you start with the data, then you define what your key business terms are and the scope of what those terms actually mean and you store that information inside of Tableau Server uh, in a place where the right people can access it. Then you start to connect the related content, and that could be connecting related content in Prep, in prep Builder uh, with your flows and then using those data roles to validate and clean up the data, or in the near future, uh, it'll be connecting published data sources in Tableau Server and then using those data role associations to inherit metadata uh, into those data sources so that you can reuse it in multiple places. And then as people start using these connections, then you can iterate. You can refine the connections. You can refine the definitions of what the data roles are. Or if multiple data roles appear uh, that are very similar in nature, uh, starting to consolidate some of those inconsistent definitions to gradually align on uh, one single shared definition of what that data means uh, in your organization. So, there are a few key themes that I'd love for you to take away from in this conversation. The first is that having consistency in your metadata is really effective for helping people get value out of your data. You can go to many different countries and without going through any kind of rigorous training program, in a lot of cases you can just drive on the road. You know, I, I just got back from my, my honeymoon in the UK and they just needed my driver's license and I could rent a car and drive all over the country. Now I had to figure out how to drive on the wrong side of the road, but, um, but the stop signs made sense, right? And, and that's because there's some consistency all around the world, almost all around the world, in how people represent uh, certain pieces of information. 
And, and your organization's no different. So coming up with a consistent representation for those key business terms really helps people move around your data and understand what's going on in those data sources really quickly, and then actually using that data correctly. So that's very important. Uh, next is automating some of the, the data preparation uh, and data enrichment process. And that could mean uh, automating cleaning up dirty data and having live data pipelines so that when your definition of your data world changes, your data is cleaned up in a different way automatically. You don't have to go in and manually uh, uh, change the rules for how your data is being validated or how your data is being cleaned up. Or it could be automatically uh, adding new bits of metadata, like synonyms uh, and other information. Uh, so that way, standardizing this metadata in your data source actually will help improve the efficiency of your organization and how they work with data. And then lastly, uh, adding a degree of intelligence to analytical workflows. And so a good example of this is in Ask Data. If you have a, a, a consistent inheritance of synonyms across many different uh, data sources of your fields, then anytime somebody goes and asks a question about, uh, about that synonym in your data source, Ask Data will automatically and intelligently just know what you're talking about. Uh, and that's what we want at the end of the day. We want to get to a world in which as much as possible, Tableau just understands uh, how your data maps to the real world. And all you have to think about is how you think about that data in the real world, and Tableau will do the rest of the work for you. So those are some key takeaways uh, for how standardizing this metadata can help you uh, uh, drive consistency in your organization, automate important analytical workflows, uh, and, and add a degree of intelligence to user interactions with data. So um, with that said, uh, I would love for you to uh, provide feedback in your mobile application about uh, how this talk went so that we can uh, refine and improve our, our discussions in the future. Uh, and then um, uh, we also have uh, uh, more talks going on later uh, today and tomorrow uh, on how to use Ask Data and Prep more effectively. So if you're interested in learning more about those uh, tools that Tableau has. Uh, and we'd love to get feedback from you about how you are using semantics and, and managing metadata in your organizations. Uh, so with that, um, thank you for your attention. And um, I'd love to, to open up the floor for questions that you folks have about uh, how data roles work, uh, about how metadata and semantics work in Tableau, and about how you can use them effectively in your organizations. So uh, thank you.